Hello again and welcome to follow my sailboat building project. My name is Panu and we are here in the bit winterish Finland and I have just started to build this 15 meter liveaboard cruising sailboat. In last episode you saw me shaping this first frame and since that really nothing major has happened. It's now early December already and what has happened has been a negotiation with the epoxy supplier and that batch of 40 kilograms of epoxy should arrive next week and then I can really start manufacturing these frames again. But for this video I figure out I have to do something so I ask in social media and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and from my patrons some questions. This is that way a QA video. I think I'll start with the overall questions and the first one is how is life in Finland nowadays? Well, <laughs> interesting question. Well, I really can't complain. Finland still is the happiest, safest and one of the wealthiest countries in the world. So, yeah, really the fall has now ended and the winter has come. It has been now on below zero for a few weeks already and things are drying up, which is good. Of course, there is dark clouds of the Ukrainian war that's going on and that brings some worries here as well. And uh, well, for most people, the major thing today is, of course, the price of electricity and er energy overall. And that way, I think it's good that I don't have yet heating in here because it would be so expensive at the moment. So really don't know what's going to happen this winter. There might be some scheduled uh, blackouts going or something because there is just not enough electrical capacity in Finland currently. So that's kind of a big deal right now. But that general issue out of the way and let's go into the boat things. Uh, there was this question, uh, not many people fully understand what strip building is all about. Why using the final frames instead of a molds? Why building upside down? How the planking will be done and stuff like that. And yeah, there were there are some many questions in this pack and I think I'm going to answer them while I'm on the computer because it's easier to visualize what's going on. All right, here is my boat frames and the shape of the hull and uh, what cold molding means, uh, what I think it means is that you don't use any heat to bend the wood but just using thin strips of wood that can be molded cold and laminated together with some glue. But the process is basically that you need some kind of a, a mold or form to put the pieces against uh, the form, the actual shape. And both hull particularly is quite complex shape, uh, at least most of the designs. And uh, if you think of putting large sheets of plywood here instead of uh, thin strips, they don't really go very well in here because they would have to bend in two directions simultaneously, which is not actually even possible to do with sheet materials. There is actually a great video of Distant Shores channel. They are building aluminum boat and they explain how the aluminum sheets are formed to make this compound curve surface. But anyway, uh, my boat will be done with strip planking, which means that on top of these frames there will be thin strips of wood glued against each other and that will be eventually covered with a couple of layers of uh, thin wood veneers. So I have uh, this section right here that kind of uh, demonstrates what that all about. Uh, so there will be these thin planks. Uh, actually they are going to be a little narrower than in this picture and they are glued together with some joints on them and they are also going to be nailed down together like this. And on top there will be these two layers of veneer. Actually that's the third one is not necessary. So this is kind of the section of the hull structure that will be there. And all these gaps, there will be always some gaps in between those just will be filled with epoxy. And on the very top there will be just protective fiberglass layer and that's about it. There are many ways to do this. Uh, I'm gonna use these strips of wood but you can use uh, 
thin strips of plywood or just veneers only, but all of those probably would need additional stringers or some other structures. So these are with combination of these big frames should bring pretty good structure for the boat. And the reason why the boat is done upside down is just purely making it easier. Uh, you can imagine if I would put these frames like this and hold them up with something and then try to put the planks against the hull here in the bottom and it would be quite difficult and not very ergonomically good option. So the boat will be built upside down to this stage with the hull on and completed and then it will be flipped over. And uh, many sources tell that this is really the easiest way to make one of designed boat and actually there are boat builders that do semi-custom boats with this technique. There's a great video of Fairly Yachts that covers pretty much all the phases in a way or another, so check that out. I put the link up there. Then there was a question that uh, how do you test the structural integrity of the frame? And actually I don't. Uh, I don't know if there is any standard way to do that except for breaking the thing down and kind of measure something out of that. But uh, I have naval architect uh, Uwe Mari Tanton, probably pronounced that way, and uh, I really trust his expertise over many decades of boat design. So of course I try to make sure that the lamination is strong and good and well done, but I don't have any way to really measure the integrity of the frames. In that matter, there is a question that what standards you are building your boat with and who did the calculations to the structural members. And the answer is my naval architect Uwe Marie Tanton. Uh, he is a little older chap already, but he has been designing boats for many decades. So I really trust his expertise. And all the structural hydrodynamics and uh, all the physical part of the boat has been done by him. So I don't really know much of that, just the basic. What I have understood of the regulations of building boats, there is really not that much of them. But one thing I still need to do eventually is to make sure that the boat will be insurable so that I can get insurance for it. So there is something in there, but I think we'll get back into that someday later on. Still to the structures, uh, the frames are much bigger compared to the most three plank boats. Why pros and cons? All right, uh, as I mentioned, I'm not expert in boat physics, but there was, was one kind of wish I had, and that was that the boat would not have stringers, so the longitudinal strips going along the hull, so that they would collect dirt and moisture on the hull to the side, you know, stringers. I put a photo here what stringer means, but I didn't want those. So the frames are a bit bigger because of that, of course. But also the physics of this boat is quite different from traditional boats with the traditional rig. So if you know the mast of traditional boat with some shrouds and other wires around there, it is actually pulled down by the wires and the boat kind of wants to go upwards on the bow and stern like this and from the sides like this. And this boat doesn't have any of those shrouds and all the forces that go from the mast to the hull are transferred to the hull via these frames. And they are going to be substantially big especially around the masts. So that's one reason why the frames are so large. Then where there was question how the masts affect the hull plan. The hull not so much. There is really just one thing and that is that when the forward mast is kind of pretty much over there on the bow, you need to have some buoyancy on there. So that is really the only thing that needs to be taken into consideration of the actual hull design. And then 
there is a question that how does the masts go with the purpose of the boat? This is an interesting question. I think they go really well. The uh, cat catch or cat schooner, how do you see it? They make the sailing much simpler, safer and easier to handle. There's no forward sails and huge forces to handle. And the downward performance should be very, very good as well. More tech, technical stuff. Uh, how do you manage the weight, center of gravity, stability, etc.? I actually have this uh, spreadsheet on Google Drive that lists most of the heavy components of the boat. You can check the link in the description somewhere. Many of those things are still kind of a rough estimates, but they should be on the right scale, I would say. But the overall weight should be about 15 tons, which is actually quite reasonable for monohull this size. The heaviest items in the boat will be the batteries, the tanks and the anchor chain. And all of the, these items should be located in the middle of the boat. So there is really not that much things, heavy things I mean, going into the bow of the boat or in the stern of the boat. I think uh, we're managing this pretty well. Uh, question about just specs, specifications, length, beam, draft and weight. So the boat will be 15 meters long, about 50 feet. It will be, the max width will be 4.45 meters, so four and a half. And the draft will be 1.8 meters with the double keels. So I think it's reasonably good for both this size. The total weight, as mentioned, should be 15 tons, from which five tons will be the keels. And some more little technical things. The aft tender storage, how does that even work? Is the bottom of the storage space above water? Blah, blah, blah. What will you use to seal the transom from the following seas? All right, this is a good question. I have been thinking this quite a lot. But the bottom of the tender garage will be above the sea level. So there's no way the sea can just go and jump into the boat from there. And it will be, of course, itself a tight, watertight compartment, the whole thing. If the transom from some reason leaks, there should be no way that the water will come into the boat from there. There will be openable hatch, some kind, I don't know really how that works, but uh, some kind of seals will go around the hatch, of course. And then there is two bilge keels, two propellers, but only one rudder. Why not go for two all the way? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. The answer really is the hull shape. This hull shape of the boat isn't really a 21st century. So this is from the 90s. It is a bit more traditional, which I wanted. I didn't want the wide stern and the kind of the clothes iron shaped boat because I wanted the, the movements to be more gentle. And that brings that the stern is much narrower than in the modern boats. That brings that there is just not room for two rudders and no need either. And I wanted to have a proper skeg for the rudder as well, so it should be protected from direct hits. But I think with bilge keels, it's also a good idea to have the double sail drives to, so that the keels protect the propellers there. What is the predicted performance cost of two bilge keels compared to a fin? All right. <laughs> Good question. I'm not expert in this, but what I have learned is that the bilge keel boats, it should point a little bit higher. If you think the boat heels a little bit and the lower keel is straight into the water, so it should be a bit more efficient. But it also is a bit smaller, so there will be a bit more leeway, which means the drift of boat going off the course like this. But there's also a benefit that the keels will be asymmetrical foils compared to a symmetrical foil with traditional keel and that should bring some additional performance for the keel as well. Have you already thought about the technology that you want to equip your boat with later? Well, not that much. I think there will be basic things for navigation and safety and stuff like that. I would like to have it kind of simple, but also easy to manage and easy to 
service and so on. So, well, we get back into that later. It's in a few years from now, so I don't know how the technology will be developed during these next few years. Probably quite much. Then there was some questions of the building process. Uh, first one, why did you choose wood? Well, that's easy to answer. It's cheap, at least in here. Uh, it's easily available and uh, easy to work with, and I'm quite familiar with it. So that was kind of no-brainer. And uh, why wood over fiberglass? Well, uh, I think, and what I have learned, that fiberglass isn't really good for one of both. So if there would be two or three boats to build, then fiberglass would be kind of a feasible option. You would need some kind of mold to do it, and the mold will be substantially big and expensive to build. With cold molded built like this, especially when I make the frames as a part of the structure, uh, there isn't really that much of temporary things to do to make the shape of the boat. Why did you choose this method of a pre-made kit? Uh, in addition, what I answered to the wood, there is also that I didn't have budget to invest a lot of money in the beginning. The shed, of course, <laughs> was a substantial investment already, but the kit of the boat, you would kind of uh, order somewhere, it would be tens of thousands. So I, I just don't have that kind of money to spend right now. And also, I'm using the CNC, so I think this kind of is a kit boat, after all. I'm just doing the kit parts myself. And then, uh, what design tools you're using? Uh, yes, I'm using Archicad, which is an architectural software. It's a really good software to do boat design, but I'm very familiar with it. I have used it for 15 years and I have a license for it, so it was kind of a obvious choice, and the hull shape have been done with Rhino by Mr. Tanton. Why unsupported masts? Carbon? Oh, this was kind of the first really big things I wanted to the boat. The carbon masts should be much simpler to sail, easier to handle, more reliable, with much less things to break, and there's no head sails. There's less forces to handle, you don't need big winches to handle those forces. You can actually check a video about that in here, where I explain the exterior plans of the boat. And those plans have really not changed that much from that, so check it out. So how are you further incorporating the CAD and the CNC in the build? After the hull is done, I really try to model and cut all possible pieces straight from the model. I can kind of get any shape from there quite easily. If it's a complex shape, I can have sections and cut those molds with the CNC, or if it's straight part, I can just cut that part straight out. So, quite a lot, I would think, and I hope. Then there's a question that environmental impact compared to a traditional, some thoughts about that. The environmental thing is quite important to me, and I think the wood as material really is the best option. Uh, it should be relatively sustainable, of course. It doesn't require much energy to mill it. If you compare for metals, it's in a whole other level, and uh, in fiberglass, I would think that the forming the fiberglass uh, fibers from glass would require quite a much energy as well. Then there's of course the side of the epoxy. It is plastic. It is uh, just one use plastic. Uh, what's the term? Thermoset plastic. So it's not reusable by thermally modifying it later. <laughs> It is mostly made of oil, of course, but the epoxy I'm going to use here is actually, I think it was 60% or 40% made from biomaterials. So that should be better for the environmental effect. I think the important thing while building it is to prevent any of that plastic dust or debris going into the environment. So I should be able to collect all the dust and plastic particles that are formed in the process and put them in the bags and bring them to the recycling center and they will be burned to heat the city. So that's kind of important, of course. But then if we compare the traditional wood build, like Tallyho or 
according to Arabella, I really appreciate those. I'm not going to use any tropical hardwoods on this project, so that's kind of important thing to me as well. And the other thing is that if you are not using those very expensive and questionable materials, you really need to use some quite toxic compounds to really make them last. There is a lead and some... I, did, I, don't, I don't even know what all chemicals and uh, preservatives you need to use with the wood boat builds. But yeah, uh, with the epoxy, wood epoxy build, you just kind of seal the wood inside the plastic. So the wood itself doesn't need any preservatives or toxic chemicals to hold it in there. And I honestly think that this method is the most environmentally friendliest way to build a boat like this. Then another environmental question, is it possible to be fossil free, electric motor, electric heating, etc. And this is a very, very interesting question. Uh, <laughs> I could <laughs> do a whole video about this, but from the beginning I've had an opinion that I should go fully electric propulsion and I will do that. And it should be enough for most of the time. It really depends how you plan to use the boat. And uh, if the slower speed isn't enough and the travel distances with the motor are not days and days, I think you will manage with the electric. However, I think there should be enough capacity and power to handle, for example, tight situations when there is uh, high currents for a few miles or something like that. And uh, heating is another question. So here in Finland, uh, now it's like a minus three degrees Celsius right now, heating with electricity is a pretty intensive thing to do. <laughs> Heat pump is the obvious choice here and the interior volume of a boat isn't really that big. So I think it would be possible to heat the boat with heat pump, with electricity. But the problem when being here in the north, there can be weeks without any solar energy. There has been quite low winds lately as well. So there is really not that first energy source available all the time. Of course, the heating to be efficient, you need, need to insulate the boat very well, which I am going to do. Uh, so, while it can be totally possible to go fully electrical with all the heating and propulsion, I think it's necessary to equip the boat with some kind of generator. And uh, right now I'm thinking the boat will have a not very large, maybe, maybe around 10 kilowatts uh, DC, generator just for backup and just for getting energy if there is a situation that you really need some more juice in there. But that said, the technology is evolving all the time and I don't really know what kind of battery technology there will be in like a three or four years from now. So we'll see about that. And then there's of course the question of the cost of the boat roughly the cost of the hull. Well, I don't have any exact numbers yet, of course, but my overall budget for the boat is 100,000 euros. That's kind of a round number. But what I have calculated, it should be pretty realistic if you don't do any fancy things. <laughs> so kind of the rough idea is that the 20,000 will go into the hull and the deck overall with materials, not labor, I'm doing the labor. Then there will be the masts, which will be <laughs> pretty expensive. I have now calculated uh, that one mast will be 20,000 euros. So there will be two, so 40,000 in there. And that should bring the hull and the masts and all the rest kind <laughs> of will go into the, all the equipment of the boat. So the sails and the motors and all bunch of stuff and there is really not limit there. So with that, I need to be really, really careful. And of course, all this material you can see around me here, the shed, the CNC, all the tools and stuff, these will be eventually sold and buy all these equipment things to the boat. Just a few more. Schedule, how long with 
will it take? I have thought that it would take around five years and it has already started, of course. I can't really make any hard deadlines here, but uh, the schedule right now or the idea right now is that I can get these frames done by this winter and the hull will be shaped during next spring and uh, this time next year. Uh, let's say uh, end of next summer the hull will be completed from the outside so that it can be flipped on the right side up. That's the schedule right now and we'll see how that goes but I really hope that works. That would mean that uh, I can do all the paint jobs and things like that on the summertime. Then there is a question of major assembly steps including mast and sails. I think I'm gonna do this with the computer as well. So let's jump into there right now. This is the roughly the shape of the boat before the planking starts. There are this keel, frames, some additional pieces, filler pieces around the mast steps, uh, the floors for the keels and the connection pieces for the keel, uh, some structures around the rudder here in the back, and also I'm thinking of putting uh, side decks and the bulwark sides on before actually putting the frames even there and of course the bow section right here. So these all structures should be, should be done before the planking starts. And then the planking should come in like this and it would then form the actual shape of the boat. And in this stage the boat will be flipped over. These mast things are just here for placeholder. But then if, when we jump to the inside, the first thing I think will be additional frames around the mast, some deck framing. I haven't modeled these all yet, but they will look something like this. And then the interior work starts by putting in some mock-ups of tanks or something like that. Maybe some equipment also, through hulls for motors or something like that, I don't know. And then starts the work with the soles to the lowest section, then some walls inside there, bulkheads, semi-bulkheads, additional walls to form the shapes of the cabins, then cabin soles, some interior work, well, not all of this, obviously, but some, something in, inside there. And uh, then the shape of the cabin tops, the walls, something like this. And then finally the top sides of the cabins. And the final thing to do is just to put all the equipment there. And of course, the masts themselves. They are obviously built separately. <laughs> But yeah, those are the major steps, but now I'm really focusing on just to making the structural things for the first phase. Oh, and one thing I almost forgot is of course the keels that will be a separate project. That can be started on the side project pretty soon, actually. We'll see. And then just last few questions before the battery of the microphone and the camera dies. Uh, do you actually plan to live in the boat? Answer is yes. I am right now also trying to develop my architectural company in the way that I can do the work anywhere in the world. Do you have any specific ideas where do you want to sail with this thing and how this is connected to the boat design? Well, yes, there is this unofficial goal that I have been talking about. I like snowboarding, I'm not very good at it, but I like that and the plan is kind of a sail the all continents to do some snowboarding. So that's kind of a <laughs> the plan here. And uh, this really brings some features to the boat, like the good insulation and the able to be in the cold environmental conditions as well. And then the last one, which is probably the most Difficult to answer. Why are you doing this? <laughs> that is interesting. Uh, yes, I don't know. Maybe 
people just have to do something and uh, I have been stuck in the dream to sail the world someday. And also for this boat, I, I want to make the boat livable so I could just buy a small boat and go, but I don't think that would really be the way I would like to be in there. So, And of course I have family, my boys are still young and I want to spend time with them here currently. So I have plenty of years to wait for them to find their own path and no hurry there. I think that answers it. <laughs> it is a big project of course, but well, now I'm stuck with it and I hope I can manage it ready someday. And uh, at this point I want to thank all the questions from the, my patrons and from the viewers in the YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. And uh, in next video I really really hope that the epoxy will arrive soon and I start to manufacture the boat parts for good. So it has been very frustratingly slow few weeks just to figuring that out. I am really happy to announce that all the time hasn't gone waste because we have come in agreement that I will get the epoxy as sponsorship, not for free, but with substantial discount and uh, more about that later. It is really awesome and from that fact I want to thank all of you viewers, all the subscribers and all my patrons and everybody who has asked me these questions and I really hope that this thing starts rolling from here. It's now December, Christmas is coming soon, so happy waiting for holidays or Christmas, whatever you do around there, all the people around the world. <laughs> well, we'll see you in next video. Bye bye.